All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing concepts and principles with identify examples of motivating operations. When we think about motivating operations, we want to think in terms of the learner or the person of interest wanting something more or wanting something less. Motivating operations change the value of consequences. And as a result, they will temporarily evoke or abate behavior. Now, when we think about motivating operations, we're not necessarily thinking about future behavior because motivating operations are antecedents. So we want to think in terms of current behaviors and the value of current consequences. Motivating operations can be a difficult topic to wrap your head around with at first, especially when you're thinking in terms of how it relates to our discriminative stimuli or our SDs. But just think about motivating operations as making us want something or not want something, whereas our SDs signal availability. As always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. Like and subscribe for all of our content. We have three BCBA videos a week in addition to our RBT content. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So motivating operations, or MOs, alter the effectiveness of a reinforcer or punisher and influence the current likelihood of behavior that has previously accessed that consequence. So the two key things here are MOs altering the effectiveness or value of a consequence, that's number one, and then influencing current behavior. So those are the two main ideas. The value of a consequence is altered, which leads to the changing of current behavior. And our contingency is the MO, the SD, the behavior, and the consequence. That's that four-term contingency that sometimes we'll talk about. Now think of MOs as making someone want something more or want something less. And that's always been the easiest way for me to explain it. If you've got a better way that you think you're going to understand it, that's fine. But I think if we start to think in terms of real life application and easy ideas, like if you don't get enough sleep, sleep becomes more valuable. There's motivation to get sleep. That's an easy way to think about a motivating operation. You're now motivated to get more sleep because you're deprived of sleep. Think along the lines of deprivation and satiation, right? Not getting enough of something or getting too much of something. The current behavior is altered with the MO. So current behavior is evoked or abated. Consequences affect future behavior. When we talk about MOs, we're thinking along the lines of current behavior. And then MOs include abolishing and establishing operations and abative and evocative effects. Abolishing and establishing operations alter consequences or the values and abative and evocative change current behavior. So let's start with establishing operations. These make reinforcers or consequences more powerful or increase their value. So the value of that consequence is established or increased. When the value is increased, what will typically happen is what we would consider an evocative effect. And an evocative effect increases behavior that gains access to those reinforcers. So when we have a situation where the value of a consequence has increased, what will typically happen is a behavior that has gained access to that reinforcer in the past will also temporarily increase. Now, once the value of that reinforcer or consequence goes down, we also expect that behavior to stop as well. Only current behavior is increased, not the future behavior. So for example, the weather report indicates rain is going to occur when you're about to leave that you grab the umbrella from the closet. Now, the weather report has done what? It's increased the value of opening the closet, getting the umbrella, and you're temporarily engaging in these behaviors. Tomorrow, if there's no rain, well, there's no reason to grab the umbrella, and you're not going to go into the closet to grab the umbrella. Now, how do you differentiate that or discriminate between an SD and an MO? Well, if the umbrella is always in the closet, then the rain, the umbrella is always there. You can go grab it at any time. Only once the weather report increases the value 
of doing so, where you actually grab the umbrella. Now, an abolishing operation is the opposite. We're going to reduce the power of reinforcers or consequence, consequences or decrease the value. And that's the technical way to think about it. We're decreasing the value. Once we do that, once the value is decreased, what happens? Well, an abative effect takes place and behaviors related to that consequence are also reduced because the value is less. Now, if you go out drinking with friends, right? Maybe that night, what do you do? You indulge in a bunch of drinks. Tomorrow, the value of those drinks and going out likely to have reduced. So all those behaviors, I'm probably going to reduce as well. So MOs are always a, a, a kind of a push and a pull, right? Kind of a tug of war between increasing the values and then the value decreases and it increases again and then it decreases. And when you start to think about it like that, you can start to think, how can I manipulate environments to alter motivation? Now, only current behaviors decrease, not future behavior. So for example, if a child just finished eating, food is less valuable and they are less likely to ask for snacks or approach the fridge. Same reinforcer food now has less effect due to the change in motivation. I pulled this from our motivating operations video, the overview video, because I think it's a good way to think about it. Now, motivating operations change how powerful a consequence is in the moment. We're talking about value. And then behavior altering pieces of motivating operations evoke or abate behavior temporarily. So if you have a motivating operations, your establishing operation will increase the value. Your behavior altering or your evocative effect will evoke the behavior. So these two are typically together. Your abative effect is going to be tied to the abolishing operation. So the value altering operation here, the abolishing operation is decreasing the value, whereas the behavior altering is abating the behavior and decreasing the value. What you want to avoid is overcomplicating this. Just think. What happened prior to the behavior that may have led to the increase in the consequence for that behavior? What did the value decrease? And was it due to that motivation that the behavior has temporarily changed? We want to keep this stuff as simple as possible. Once you can really understand it and you're fluent on a simple level, then start to expand your ideas. But you've got to understand the most basic, simple ideas behind these concepts first. Thanks for watching. As always, please like and subscribe. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.